Hey, this is Rip Bison. You're checking out the Three Count Podcast here. Live with me. Do you really want to ride with me? I'm in the club, baby, grind on me. Do you want to get live with me? Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Wayne Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And by season four, our 300 and something episode, I would just hope you say it with me, I am your Sherpa. Because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, you got to ask someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently. You can't ask why it's never about me. It's about who's entering. So who's entering the ring today? You see him right next to me. You can find this person at the Wrestling Open. You can find him at Grind. You can find him at Limitless. You can find him at BIP, Live, SUP, TRP. Action at NCW. He is a brawler. He is a worker. He is a promoter. He is Iron Rip Bison. Acknowledge. Hey, <laughs> let's go. Man, you got think, you got a whole bunch of promotions written down there. Hi, huh? I forget half the ones you just listed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we just just doing history, doing research. You gotta do your thing right before you have your guests on. You can't. Can't stand up here and be like, yeah, this guy wrestles. Oh, you, you, Intro. you, you start off, hey, why'd you start wrestling? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's, that's one of my favorite ones. Why'd you start wrestling? What got you into wrestling? No, that's cool. It's, <laughs> it's fun, though, because like, what else? Like, I love asking that question, though, like as full, full transparency, because it's so cool to hear all the different stories that you get from people when they mention yeah. about like how they got into the business, right? Or what got them into it. Like for me, like it was my aunt, right? So I was like, I was a kid, and I'm sitting down watching Saturday, uh, it was like Saturday, sun, uh, Saturday afternoon special or something like that. I can't remember Saturday. But it was with WWF, and the first yep. thing I see is this dude get wrapped up in the in the in the ropes, and uh, this other dude pulls out this cobra, and then the cobra starts yeah, biting okay, the dude. Yeah. And I was like, is this like this all the time? And she's trying to cover my eyes, and I was like, no, I still want to look. You know, so yeah, 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 that's yeah. what that's what introduced me to wrestling. I was like, I got to do that someday. <laughs> well, I agree. Hey, that, at least that one's interesting. Mine was a promo. I watched uh, Mick Foley turn into Cactus Jack on a SmackDown, and it was a promo about how he's going to beat up Triple H. And that's what got me into it and stuff. So, like, at least yours was like out of this world. Like, you saw a guy literally have another guy get bitten by a cobra like that's a, <laughs> that's a way more interesting story than oh this guy's mad at this guy and i really like the way that guy told that guy to piss off you know like <laughs> <laughs> wait it's weird too because like i've come to find out that like because i'm you know and a lot of you know people who are watching the show they know like i'm i'm turning 38 this year and like so it's interesting to hear people tell me that what got them into wrestling was some guy sitting on a stage talk about his, you know, after this man dies, his doofus son-in-law and doofus daughter will take over the bit. And I was like, that's what got you in <laughs> was CM Punk's pipe bomb. I was like, oh wow. <laughs> See, like I'm right in between. I'm right in between because I'm turning I'm turning 30 this year. And so like you you did the Macho Man Jake the Snake, but Macho Man and Jake the Snake were already leaving the business when I started watching so like <laughs> cactus was, or cactus was on his way out in 90 oh was that 99 or 2000 that i saw that anyways re- turn of the century and so like he they're on their way out but when you were there they were on their way out kind of and uh, yeah. at least of the wwf and now today nowadays like it ages you so much when you think about that there are kids i know guys who are doing way better than me and stuff that watch, but like Batista was their favorite wrestler in 2006. Like that's who got him into uh, wrestling was Batista or Cena doing his big run or what you call it. Or like you said, CM Punk. And when, when did he do that? That was 2010, 12. Yeah. 2012. I think it was just on the cusp of me getting out of the military. Was oh, see, when that's when 2012 was when I was breaking into the business. So like, yeah. <laughs> and that and that was a decade ago now at this point and uh, or more than a decade ugh. um and it's just like it's crazy you and who knows what people are going to be on your podcast in a couple of years saying oh they saw uh kofi kingston win the belt or something like that you know something 
way more recent than that. Or Cody Rhodes came back and whatever he ends up doing in the WWE and stuff like <laughs> that could be the reason why they started in the business. It's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. It also scares you how quickly time goes by. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I recently had a guest on and she had, she was getting ready to graduate high school and it's like, whoa, like that's crazy. It's, it's just to me, it's just, it's a it blows my mind. Cause I'm like, I have seen double what you have seen, <laughs> like just in life. Not just so much like, it's just like, oh, you're eight, like, no, in life. Like, and so when I look at wrestling and I'm like, man, like not only, and, cause you know, we all talk about the window, the window of wrestling and like, depending on like how you take care of your body and stuff like that, like how well you're going to be able to like hang in the game. Right. Per se. And like, for me, like I said, it, I'm going into my fourth year and here I am turning 38. Right. And it's just crazy to think that there's people who have been wrestling, you know, since they're like 14 or 15, like training and then having their first matches at 17, 18, they've already got like four or five years under their belt. So it's like, you have to like learn quick. Right. But then you also have to understand like the window is like, it's not very big. It is and it isn't. I've noticed that. Well, because I mean, like, w famous professional wrestler DDP started when he was 38. That was his break in year, you know? Like, so, and he had a very successful, yeah, I guess you can call it short. I don't think he did much wrestling into his 50s, uh, unless, other than, like I said, I'm not a really big follower of DDP's career other than the yoga thing. Um, but, like, yeah, he, I guess he did have a smaller window because he did start so late, but his window was awesome. He got to wrestle Macho Man Randy Savage. He got to do Hulk Hogan. He got to do the whole NWO thing. So he got he a had pretty hell, he had a hellacious career for however short it was. But there's, I know a couple of guys that are breaking in now, and they're, man, I think one of them is like 43 and stuff like it. I I guess anyone can do it now. I I think it's the it's way more inclusive in that sense that it doesn't matter how old you are or what shape you are, you can start at any time, and uh, it's just how much work you you put into it, and that's how you that's what you get out of it, you know. Uh, so I don't think there is a limit on the age anymore because hell, you see some of the Japanese guys that are still wrestling, they're going on to sixty and they're doing way better than like they're in way better shape and doing rougher matches than the undertaker at 55 was doing when he was only doing once a year and stuff. So like, I don't know, man, it, it's so weird. I think it's a case by case type of thing. Yeah. Now. I, I, I could, I could see that point. I see that point. Yeah. Don't count yourself short. You're four years in. Now you got 20 more. Who knows? <laughs> hey, who knows? Right. It, yep. And you're right. And it, it does come down to like how much you put in, but then also like how much you take care of like your body right on the outside, because I mean, you could, you could have a, and I think there's probably, there's guys out there who are doing deathmatch wrestling that have been doing it for like 15, 16 years. And they just, they just love doing it. And it's just, I know for me, like the style that I kind of want to get into is more kind of like on the technical, it's kind of like street brawler, just like wrestling, just, kind of whatever throws everything out the wall kind of style but like one thing i definitely try to do is stay away from like like really high risky moves because i just want you know i mean like at 60 70 years old like i want to be able to walk around and be like hey i'm, I'm still feeling pretty good and not getting up and hearing my knees crack three times before i ever leave the bed i'm just like oh i shouldn't have that is that, that 450 splash doing it eight times eight times a week like i'm just not feeling it right now <laughs> yeah right, right. It, it's it's actually funny this is a little side note uh i actually threw out my back and it was it was deadlifting in my gym and it was doing a warm-up weight and like i it hurts sometimes to sit on a couch but it's not from wrestling i'm not, <laughs> knock on wood i've never hurt myself from wrestling it's me preparing to my body to get ready to wrestling to hurt me and stuff so like i don't know <laughs> like you want to protect your body but who knows you could wake up one day roll out of bed and you have a bad <laughs> your your leg was hanging off the bed when you were sleeping and now your knees mm. got no acl and stuff and that, i knew a guy that that happened to it wasn't even yeah he was sleeping and his leg was hanging off the bed and because it fell asleep it like overstretched his tendons and ripped them out oh, and he basically damn. needed a new knee after and it's like you couldn't do that jump. The guy used to do moonsaults, miss them all the time. Like you, that didn't hurt you. <laughs> you know, it's you sleeping in bed. I mean, you, you can take care of your body all you want, but things, <laughs> weird things just happen, man. You know, it's, it's it really does. Yeah. yeah like no, I, said, no. I was, 
and the, my deadlifting thing. And like I said, I'm scared to death. I just started deadlifting again in the gym because I, I need it. You know, I need that exercise my to strengthen my lower back that mayor that I've been babying for six months now. But like, it wasn't even, it wasn't like I was going for a one rep max heaviest lift I've ever done. No, it was a warm up weight that I was doing. And I had one of my buddies actually, uh, do, do you remember when we were in Delaware all the time? ZPB? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was actually lifting me with that day and I was, <laughs> it was pulling and it went, it sounded like bang. It was my back. And he looks up and he goes, was that your back? And I'm like falling over onto the, <laughs> onto the rack of weights. And it's like, man, I, I, I take bumps on the floor. I go through tables. I go through entrance ramps. I've taken some gnarly stuff like back body drops on the floor, go through chairs and stuff. And that never messed me up too bad but no this stupid warm-up that i was doing <laughs> is what messed me up so hey i guess I, i'm one of those uh outliers that isn't going to get hurt in wrestling but it's going to be the outside of the ring i'll get hit by a car or something i don't know <laughs> well like for me especially like when i'm in the gym and i'm like working out i the one thing i definitely focus on too is like i and it just got changed right so when i'm not doing all this like i'm i'm a personal trainer and then my boss is my trainer and so the okay. one thing he pulled me to the side, he was like, hey, so for the last year that I've been like in the gym, he's like, hey, I just want you to get just put on wrestling like weight. Like I want you to get stronger. Right. That's yeah. all. And at the start of this year, he was like, all right, now we need to stop training like that. And we need to start training like an athlete. So now he's like, we're going to do plyometric work. And I'm like, I can't even spell that. And he's like, yeah. we're going to do agility drills and speed drills. So it's like, oh, I, uh, I'm not fast. I, I used to be fast when I was a kid, but now I'm not anymore. And so, yeah. like, he has me jumping on platforms and on the platforms, off the platforms, like bound drills, like speed work drills. So I'm, like, working all this stuff out. And I'm like, bro, this is – it's next level of, like, oh, my God, I did not know this is a type of training. So when you talk about doing warm-up weights and stuff like that, I definitely can relate because it's like – I was like, man, I just don't need to, I just, I was like, I'm trying to like help conserve my body the best I can, but then also be able to perform at a peak. And I'm like, this, yeah. this is all rough. <laughs> yeah, right. You're, you got to be a professional athlete. It is weird that I, I was, I was talking about that with uh, a bunch of guys actually here and in, in, in outside of Delaware I was telling them, I was like, listen, like as much as you want to be the strongest guy in the gym, like that's irrelevant when it comes to like being in a pro in a, in a wrestling ring, right? Especially being a pro athlete, like you're a pro athlete and you have to really take that into account that the last word in there athlete is what you need to focus on. And that's like, so I keep, I've been introducing people now to like doing band work, right. Or just working with uh, stretch bands or even just like getting into uh, just body weight footwork drills. And so yeah. everybody's starting to see like there's different benefits and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, this is all going to help you guys out in the long run. I promise you. And so, I've been getting yeah. some messages back from them and they're like, Oh man, thanks. For, thanks for like pointing these out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a, a you gotta have a, you gotta have work muscles as long as, as well as show muscles too. You know, you gotta look good, but also be able to do something with that muscle. Like uh, I know I've helped a couple of uh, schools with some training once in a while. And I, I always say it's like you, it, it might be, and I hate using the word fake, and uh i that's just old school person in me but um like yeah it's fake it's it, it's a it's a work the finishes are called but you got to be able to control a person who's equal size to you in the ring and being being safe with moves and stuff requires way more strength than just being in a bar fight and you're trying to hurt somebody you i've watched those bar fight videos on youtube or like tiktok and stuff you know where the guys are doing power bombs and stuff and the guy's getting right up it's easy to do these moves and not care about the person it, it's harder to do these moves safe and controlled and then having to get up after it and do it again and again and again and it takes a different type of strength and i think a lot of people uh who are especially breaking into the business forget that they forget that this is it is a athletic comp, uh, contest. It is, it requires physical training. I think a lot of people, I think, get into it because they, they see it as, I don't know how to put this, uh, like nicely, but like they see it as like, there are a lot of theater kids in wrestling and I'm not saying they don't belong here. I'm saying they need to realize that it's not theater. Yeah. It is a type of theater, but there's a lot of, 
it, it's like the circus. You've got to be able to, you got to be able to hold these people and stuff like that. And so that's one thing I always try to beat into new people that I talk to or when they ever, every time they ask, Oh, what, what should I do to get better? It's like, you can learn all the moves, but if you can't control somebody and stuff, you're going to, you're going to hurt. And then you have to uh, hurt somebody. And then you got to live with that. And I don't ever, I, I always feel so guilty if I really injure somebody, unless the person deserved it. The person deserved getting <laughs> punched in the throat or kicked in the head or dropped on their head. Uh, then, okay, cool. Then I don't feel too bad, but if they didn't deserve it. We're out there. Hey, let's have a good match. And all of a sudden I, I break the guy's back. I'm going to feel pretty terrible about it. Yeah. It's one thing that like, so one of my mentors, um, not, I'm not name dropping nobody. We could talk about it after the show who said it, but the one thing that they, they kind of like helped instill into me too, while I was like, even just like at the beginning phases of training uh, was like get to 225, right? And whether you're benching, you're deadlifting, you're squatting, 225 is the weight that you want to get at. And the reason why is because most people are about that average, about that 200 pound average, right? Mm -hmm. In the indie scene. And he's like, if you can control that weight, he's like, you can control everybody because they're going to be able to control themselves and then you can control it. So you can double up on your your safety. So that's why I always think it's, I think it's very interesting. (laughs) I think it's very interesting to, uh, I thought that process was very interesting. So I started like playing around with all those weights and like yeah. really working on just that, that side of things. Yeah, no, that, that makes actually total sense. I've never thought about putting a weight to it. Cause you, if you do think about the big guys in the indie scene are actually like 225. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of guys who are heavier than that legitimately anymore. There's people who say that they are, then you look at them, you're like, yeah, you're not. I'm 235. My weight announced in a ring is 235. Uh, and I'm pretty solid. I don't look like, I don't look like doughy or anything, but I'm definitely not in crazy lean shape. So when I see other guys who are way leaner than me and shorter and stuff, I go, ah, also I used to amateur wrestle. So I used to be really good at looking at a guy and going, Oh, this is how much that guy weighs because there's always weight classes. So you knew which body type was at certain weights. And so I was always about five pounds around uh, what I'd guess what they would actually be. And like, I, I like the guys who come in and they're like, Oh, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but there's one guy that I've been on shows recently and they say he's 250, and he comes up to here and he's, <laughs> he's built like a he's built like a brick shit house but uh what's we call he uh no nah, not not his wildest dreams to see 250 he's doing the old 80s gimmick where they take your uh what's we call take your weight and add 30 pounds and that's what your uh wrestling weight is you know oh if you're 250 or 280 if you're 300 you're 350 you know like that uh yeah no i know you i know you're not heavier than me i picked you up <laughs> I felt see that's the funny thing because like for me like in character wise right when I build my when people ask me for my weight I legit tell because like my wrestling character is supposed to be like the mysterious kind of type character so I always tell people that my weight is just for it that's it <laughs> for it <laughs> that's good I like that that's interesting <laughs> it doesn't then, like it keeps you it keeps you hidden you can be fat some days you can be skinny some days it doesn't embarrass you <laughs> no nah, be like how much how much does he how much do you think he weighs. I don't know. Shoe wise, I can tell people I'm all right. That I'm 195 pounds. It's what it is. But if you yeah. was to be like, how much do you? What's your weight, Red Dog? Be like, for it. No, oh, that's Simple. good. See, sometimes <laughs> I do when I do 235, and I'm feeling a little bit leaner on days. I go, ooh, maybe I'm not that heavy. And then there's some days I hear 235, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, we're definitely not 235 today. We're definitely heavier. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, ooh, wake up call. I, I do love that over the belly. <laughs> I do love the aspect of wrestling that like exaggerates like height, weight, like build, right where you're from. I I love the aspect of it because it's it's one of those things that like you can lie about it and no one's gonna check you. Like it's not like they're gonna grab the tape measure and just like I have to see if this man really is six foot tall. Nobody cares. They're just going to take your word for it and just run with it. And you can make your character ever tall you want. Yeah, I, I actually, speaking, you mentioned Wrestling Open in the beginning of when you were introducing me. And that show has actually made me super self conscious about my character work and stuff because there's no seats. Everyone's standing up against the ring there. And like, so when you make your entrance, you're walking through the fans, you know, like there's no separation. And 
you realize that, man, I'm supposed to be a big brawler. Like everyone says that I'm a Haas online and they say, oh, Haas match, she's going to big meaty men slapping me. And then I'm walking by some of these fans that are huge. Like, I mean, <laughs> and like most of them there are bigger than me like height wise and probably width wise too at the thing. And it's like, man, how am I supposed to be a Haas standing next to all these guys who aren't in here doing the Haas stuff? You know, <laughs> like I, I'm, I, I like when I'm in a ring, I look big and up against the ropes. I look really big, but if those guys got in the ring next to me, they look like Andre the giant next to me, you know, and they're sta and they paid to come see me be a Haas, you know? So that, that show, <laughs> that always got me really self-conscious about, Oh man, I really wish, and I tell them when they come over to the merch table and stuff, and they come over like, "Oh man, I really like your stuff." And I go, "Man, I wish I was your height." There's one fan there who's like six seven, six eight, and it's like, "You're a whole foot and a half, or a foot, yeah, no, about a foot taller than me." It's like, "Man, I could be making a ton of money if I was as tall as you," you know? It's just, it's, yeah. So I don't. If the weight and height thing doesn't really matter anymore. If you wrestle on those, uh, if you wrestle on those shows, you're not 40 feet away from the wrestlers anymore. You're right up and close. So it's like, oh, this is a normal guy. <laughs> well, that was so. That was something I learned last year, like doing a dark match. Well, it was a it was a practice match for the wrestling open. It was something I learned. Was like, yeah, because like everybody's like right, and it wasn't even with a crowd. It was with other workers, right? They were like yeah. all up against on the on the ring, and like it took me out of my element because I was like. I'm just not, I'm not, I wasn't used to it. Like it was just something different for me, but it was like being in front of like, let me be real, being in front of everybody else. I was like, I know. And in my mind, I was like, I know all these guys are like on my team and they want to see me succeed because otherwise we're not really like there to support each other, but it is still nerve wracking to be in front of everybody and yeah. work a practice match. And just, you know, that they're, they're like, Hey, we're going to be in character too. We're going to cheer for you. We're going to boo for you. Right. Just get us involved. And I'm like, bro, like that here's some of the people that I've been watching on the wrestling open, watch me perform. And I'm like, oh man, like it was a whole, it was a whole mind fuck. And then like two, like it was like a month and a half later, right? I ran into like El Johnny Santos at a, a Lucha Libra show and he got to see me perform. And I ran into Landon Hale at another yeah. show. And he got to see me perform. So I get to I go back and be <laughs> all these guys again. And they're like, why weren't you like this, like at the wrestling open? I'm like, bro, it is intimidating being oh, yeah. around yeah. that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's uh, what you're calling. You're standing there. You're you're trying to try out for not only open uh, and beyond, technically, because they're both one and the same. Don't let them fool you. Uh, <laughs> um, what you call it? You're you're trying out for these guys, and uh, you know they they're looking for a certain thing, and then you have all your your peers there watching you and those are the hardest people those are the hardest people to work for because they're yeah they might say they're on your side but they're also watching to see what you do wrong they are they they, they know all the ins and outs of the business now and so when they're critiquing you they're critiquing you extra hard because they know you know they know the insights yeah they can cheer and stuff but i've always noticed if you if you can pop the boys or the boys and girls and which called people in the back. If you can pop them, you're, you can work any arena, any, any crowd in the world because they're going to pop for anything that's wrestling, you know, like pro wrestling. Cause they are the, the ultimate fans of pro wrestling are the guys who are in it. Don't let any of these people go, Oh, I'm in it for the money. Uh, fool you. No, you're a big fan of wrestling and this is how you decide you want to make your money. If you can pop those guys, you can pop anybody. You can work anybody. And that, uh, and not to make it all about me, but like I found that out during the quarantine. Limitless did the road tapings up there in Maine. They would do a big set of like 25 matches and then release them type of thing. And the, the fans there were all the boys that were on the taping. So there's 54 wrestlers watching everybody's match and they're acting like fans and they got a thing. And the best matches were the ones that got all of us to stand out of our seat and go crazy, you know, like, and those guys got you, uh, what you call those guys got the push and stuff because like, like I said, if you can work the, if you can get the guys excited about seeing your wrestling, then you can get, you can get the fans re uh, into it because the fans, 
think they're like the guys, but they're not like the guys, and they'll never be like the guys. And I'm sorry to all you fans watching, thinking that you're smart and in the business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can still work you. <laughs> It's funny though because like I and it's funny because you mentioned the tapings because I remember like watching the Limitless tapings right and the first match that got me hooked into watching the Limitless tapings was actually uh, Becca versus Davian and like oh yeah, yeah that that finish with those two if you guys haven't seen you can go watch it but I was like oh yeah well <laughs> so you, that had you reacting to it like it, everybody there was reacting to it like that too and those were guys on the roster and stuff like we had uh or soon to be wwe guys there we had soon to be AEW guys there and they were the guys you think that are on a different level than you when you see them because you see the opportunities they're getting and they were going crazy for that finish and like I, and again it goes back to it if you can work it and it goes back to the opening tapings if you can pop the guys or pop the promoter, you can pop anybody. You know, you can get you can get the fans on your side. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, if they know who you are, if they don't know who you are, you can get them if you can pop the boys. I like that too. So there you go. So if anybody's wondering like how you can you know make things work, hey, that's a part for you. It, oh, it's is wild. Go ahead. Yes, I know. On top of that too, is because actually back when I broke in. There was a there was a rule at least where I was training in uh, the Northeast. Uh, it was like, oh, don't don't do this to pop the boys. It's not for the boys. You gotta you gotta pop the fans. Well, to pop the fans, you gotta pop the boys. So like it, that that rule was kind of just like them trying to intimidate you out of the business, making it seem harder than this because you're trying to pop the fans and you go like me and they don't they don't like you. But if you can get the the boys to like you then the fans will follow suit type of thing. So yeah, that's, that's the last time I, that's the last thing I'm going to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, so we kind of been talking about like taking, like doing things to get warmed up. And like, you were talking about taking like some bumps and stuff like that, like on a ring entrance or kind of like wherever, but I just want to, what's the worst bump you have taken? Oh, actually it wasn't a bump. It was a kick, and um, I was wrestling uh, Merck down in uh, TWE in uh, Chattanooga, and I got tied up in the ropes like Macho Man did, and uh, he came in with those karate uh, MMA kicks right to your chest. My chest was wide open, and my arms were really stretched tight, The rope, uh, but uh, it was my fault why it happened but what's your call so he comes in for this kick and i don't know if i had stayed flat there he would have hit me fine and i would have been fine you know but for some reason at the last second i like turned into him like this out of it and because Mm -hmm. my arms were still in the ropes they were it got even tighter and he kicks so hard they're safe they're nice and easy and i mean he has the big kick pad but because i turned it had overstretched my chest mm. my pec a little bit too much and he, when he hit i just went i it felt like i tore a pec and like i i couldn't move my arm higher than like 45 degrees for the rest of the match and that was right in the beginning of the match that sucked um i have taken uh i have famously taken a ton of back body drops on the floor and uh, I'll take those any day of the week over getting that that kick again because like I couldn't even sleep on my back. He didn't tear a pack, but it was something I don't know if it was deep bruising underneath because you have all that that pec minor underneath there and everything, or it was a rib. But I couldn't lay on my back for like three months because I was very active at that time too, so it wasn't resting. So uh, I mean, I didn't really go to the gym because I knew I couldn't lift. But um, so it was just mm-hmm. basically leg days, but because of uh i'm bumping all the time that thing that didn't heal for the longest time that sucked that was the, that was the worst definitely the worst bump and similar things have happened again it's usually a strike that messes me up because i'm a big 80s action figure and i don't bend you know you work on your <laughs> flexibility and then you won't get hurt yes flexibility is key like in this business like for the i get jealous of people that i see i can do like the splits because i'm like man like I just work a little bit harder on my stretching game, like 
if I roll my ankle, I, I know I won't get hurt. So I was like, I definitely yeah, yep. gonna keep this up. Definitely. So I definitely, I definitely understand. I, it's crazy. Cause like, it's always like the things that you don't expect to like do some damage that ends up doing like some serious damage. Like I know for me, uh, I took a, I took a backbreaker, um, and like i have no idea what happened whether like my feet didn't plant right or maybe i just hit on the bone uh of my my friend's thigh but i just remember like i could not bend like anyway like left right forward backward i was just i was toast and it wasn't the real so backbreaker much that, <laughs> yeah i was like i was like my friend literally banged me like that's what it was and it was so it was so hard to breathe and like I had to drive home. It was an hour and a half drive back to my place. And I yep. was just like <gasps> the yep. whole time. And I was like, yo, this hurts. And I was like, remember like going to my car and like just grabbing like a thousand milligrams of like ibuprofen, which by the way, like not always recommended. And then just like getting like a tiger bomb and like putting it on my back and then just like driving home. I was like, as long as it goes numb. I'll be okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's yeah. what that's all it was. So I just took it to took it in stride and like uh but yeah, it just recently like healed up. So it's been yeah. like four weeks, four or five weeks since oh, it happened. Geez. And I was like, yeah, I was like and I thought you know, because at first like you're always thinking like worst case scenario, like you know, like you thought like maybe you tore a pack, right? And I thought like, oh, I think I I think I might have like shifted something over in my back. And then I realized like it was the muscle. And so I was like, yeah. all right. As long as it's just a muscle, I think I'll be okay. I can like handle some things here and there, and then I'll be able yep. to actually. Actually, I think when I saw you at one CW, I was still dealing with it. Oh yeah, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, man. But you're. But it's it's wild. Like the, it's the things that you're not expecting to happen that just like, you know, something happens, and you're just like, oh my god, I'm in so much pain right now. Yeah. No. Definitely. So check this out. I want to ask you, uh, you've been in, you know, almost like what, 13 years, right? 10. Oh, this will be, this will be my 11th year. Yeah. 11th year. Uh, so you've been in a lot of different locker rooms and I'm sure you have one of these, right? So I got to know, but what's the hardest lesson you've learned being in the business? Um, hardest lesson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ears open mouth shut keep your ears open and your mouth shut uh um what you call it when you're especially when you're breaking in the business or however new you are i didn't become like cognitive on my skill level or anything until i was about seven eight years in i really just got i was never really comfortable in a locker room I would talk to my friends, like who I came up with type of thing, or if I was always on shows with them, they'd be my friends. But when you're, when you're in a locker room, because especially when I was very busy, I'm not as busy as there's now. And also with running grind and stuff, my reach is a lot bigger. So like there's more, when I go into locker rooms, not everybody's a stranger. Even if we've never met, they know of my stuff. So it, you're treated a little bit different. But um, back then when, no, when there was, when, you didn't have a lot of stuff or you didn't have anything to your name. You were just coming in for the first time. Be friendly, be polite, but don't say anything because you're going to piss somebody off and uh, always listen. And you learn little things and stuff. Uh, what you call it. And even if they're being friendly with you, just be friendly back. Don't get comfortable. If the, if there's guys in there who are vetting to you and they're just being nice, type of thing don't act like oh he's being nice to me now we can be buddies because you can't you know a lot of these guys and especially me uh personally too is uh i'm friendly at a professional level but like if you want to get like really close with me and stuff we have to work a match that's the ultimate trust level if you want me to be comfortable with you like at a show and stuff like not on my guard i've got i have to wrestle you in a match you know, that's the ultimate trust thing. And then once we do that, then, okay, cool. We can joke around and stuff. And that's what I learned there is like, I kept my mouth shut. I got over with the guy, the veteran guys in the locker room by 
being respectful to them and leaving them the fuck alone. You know, if they, if they had something to say to me, I would go and be stand at attention and take it, you know, type of thing. But like I said, ears open, mouth shut. Not everybody's your friend and not everybody has to be your friend. That's another thing. Don't force your friendship on people. There's some guys in the business that don't really like talking to anybody. They just want to go in and do their wrestling, you know? Don't force yourself onto people. You know, it's it's still like that. You know, it's uh, it's crazy how much actually that still is. Actually, a lot of people, I think, really close up uh, with the culture of wrestling nowadays. They're just being very careful um, and uh, just ears open, mouth shut. You know, you don't have to say anything when you're new in the business. You don't have anything to say. Be in the business for 10 years and then you have something to say or buy yourself a wrestling promotion and uh, have no money. Then you can say all the things you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, and that's the thing, too, is like, at a, at, OK, so being at a promoter, right, as a promoter, right, at, at Grind, like, what are the things that you look for to, like, if there's somebody out there, like, that wants to try to get your attention or something like, what are you looking for to see if you could bring that person possibly into your promotion? Uh, I'm a huge proponent of show up, uh, show that you want to be there. You know, I know, it, I know it's not a case for guys who got long travel and stuff. And I know like maybe some guys in Texas want to work and stuff and they're going to have a harder time with doing that because you can't just show up and do ring crew or stuff like that, but show that you want to be there, show an interest that you want to be there. Um, show that you care about the product that you're interested in being part of. And I think that goes across the board. I think if you show interest in being in whatever company you choose to be in uh, or want to be in, if you show an interest in that, I think that speaks volumes to that you actually care. And I want to book guys that actually care about what their product is and how it can help my product. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business for both of us. I have to make money enough to run the next show and to be able to afford guys, you have to make money so that you can get home and uh, what you will call it and stuff like that. And so let's not waste each other's time. If you want to be here, then want to be here, you know, like that. Uh, and then we just recently started doing like the tryout ma or tryout matches. They're not really tryout matches. Ever they, we, we take care of the guys who do it, but it's like a pre-show match. We, if we have some guys that were really interested and they want to drive out and they want to actually wrestle in front of our crowd because our crowd is very, I, it's not very different, but it's very grind oriented. There's a lot of fans that pro wrestling grind is wrestling to them. They don't watch WWE. They don't watch AEW. It's pro wrestling grind because they're local stuff and they're very into the product. So it's very specific on what you can get over with our thing. And so if these guys want to come and try out in front of them, and stuff like that like that's how you do it you show up and you help out a little bit because also we don't have a crew where uh me and uh delmi exo the owners and perry von vicious are usually the first three at the building and the last three at the building uh, the day of a show and we are set up we start at noon and it takes it takes four hours for the three of us to set up everything and stuff like that so like if you really want to get on our good side show up and help that out and stuff like that um but like i said the biggest thing is is i really care about wrestling wrestling has given me everything really good in my life all my experiences uh i met delmi through wrestling um it i love professional wrestling no matter how much it wants to hate me sometimes and stuff like that you know it i love it so if you care about professional wrestling as much as i do then you're going to get a step ahead of some other guys who just want to come in and take my money. You know, like, what are you going to give me? Basically what I'm going to give you. That's how, that's how I look at booking guys and stuff. And like I said, the, we have the preliminary series, which is guys who have come and helped out and that's how they get on the, you get on the show. Definitely a quick kickstarter to get up there. It's old school. It's paying dues, but I think it, you learn lessons also, I think everyone should know how to set up a ring. <laughs> you know, I think that's a that's a skill that every wrestler needs to know how to do. Uh, man, women or beast, you know, like what's your call it? You should know how to set up a ring. You should know how to set up a show. You should know how to how chairs and stuff 
that that behind the scenes stuff you should know how to do and that's how you learn it uh, there's some guys who just send their videos and then say oh why am i not getting booked well do you actually care you know do you care to learn the inner workings of this business and that's what i look for for grind at least uh which call like I said, if it's not my show, it's not my rodeo, you know. But that, at grind, that's uh, what you call at grind. That's what I look for. And I feel like that's like a good, just like life lesson, just in general. Anyway, it's just something you could take that anywhere. Like if you're genuinely inter- interested in the product, someone's gonna notice, and they're gonna want to help you get into the product, right? Whether whether it's wrestling or maybe it's in like lifting or just like getting into the gym or you're just like that person wants to learn how to ballroom dance right like you just show up and show general interest in just anything like people are going to take care of you because they're going to see you actually care so I definitely like that you're you are very big on people like showing up helping out and then like showing a general interest into what is it that makes pro wrestling grind like so amazing because I heard about you guys through uh, a friend of mine and then I started paying attention and once I started paying attention I was like I'm genu- I'm hooked and I'm hearing about it in Maryland and then I'm like I need to keep paying attention and checking out the Twitter feeds and like yeah. watching all the clips and stuff so I'm like genuinely like paying attention to everything so I was like I like the fact that you're like you notice those things and that's how you know people who want to you know come aboard like that's how they're gonna get in is like come visit help set up show interest, pay attention, and then help tear down because that's also going to be important. Yeah. Oh, it, it, to kind of piggyback on that too, it, I have a very passionate roster. The guys that we have on the roster, like our Jay Freddies, our guy um, Perry Von Vicious, uh, even the commentary team with Johnny Torres and Troy Nelson and Alyssa Marino, we have Andy Brown there. There is – we have – and our flights, we have Anthony Henry, we have – Gary J, I have Derek Neal, and all those guys, I, you got to think about, they're so passionate about it, and I don't want to, I don't want to replace them, they're great to have in the roster, so like, if I bring in a new guy, you got to be, that sounds, I I don't want to say replacement, because there's only so many spots, you know, there's only so many spots on a show, and, uh, and we don't run a 14 match card, and uh, it's like, so who do we, replace these very passionate wrestlers with well you got to be equal in passion for it man you gotta like like i said i don't want to these guys are all my friends we hang out after the show and stuff like that for hours and hours into the night we drink at my house and stuff like that like we share car rides with each other like these are friends you know uh they or they become friends because of the grind experience the whole grind day and like i know that we we tweet out that oh it's hashtag grind day it's really grind weekend at that point even though we only have one show because the guys usually come in the night some guys come in the night before and they hang out at my house all day go through the show and then after the show we're at my house again until midday the next day hanging out like we're thinking about we we, we, it's not really a party, but like we're sitting there and it's like a job well done. And we all hang out and we celebrate the fact that we did another good job tonight. You know, the whole team came together. And so like, that's a, that's a big thing that goes into picking these guys. If you want to be, if you want to be part of it, man, you got to show, you got to show the passion that the guys who already are here are still showing it, you know, and they still want to keep doing it. So it's like, it, it's hard. It's hard. And it just sounds like it's not like there's not a lot of opportunity, but there is, we're starting to get, better at the opportunities for guys coming in and stuff so there is hope (laughs) i like it so hey we're gonna move on into like my favorite segment of the three count podcast right and that's our three count podcast 10 count questions and mr bison this is how it works i'm gonna fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast and whatever your answer is that's your answer okay so we're gonna put on the imaginary timer for added pressure Bing. and in the words of my favorite commentator, Mike Goldberg. Here we go. SmackDown or Raw? Uh, SmackDown. Favorite actor? Arnold. Marvel Sword or DC? Uh, ooh. <laughs> DC. Favorite cartoon? Oh, man. Uh, it was SpongeBob when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> okay, I like it. Uh, in a battle of the irons, 
Iron Mike Tyson or the Iron Maiden herself, the Titanic? Oh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie? Uh oh, man, that that one's really hard because I don't. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Al, any of them. Uh, this is a Lord of the Rings map behind me. So yeah, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I was peeping. I was like, it yeah. definitely is Middle Earth. I definitely yeah. see it. <laughs> uh, all right, Apple or Android? Android. This is an Android. <laughs> <laughs> favorite podcast uh, you you had me on <laughs> there we go <laughs> uh nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast uh uh perry von vicious uh i always throw him under the bus for things so <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah waste his time <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show favorite curse word Oh, can I say it? Yes, I actually, I know. This I probably should have. I, I probably should have caveat that right at the beginning of this podcast that you're able to curse on this show. <laughs> okay, well, it's not. I mean, it's it's cunt. I love the word cunt. That's a fun word to say. <laughs> um, I don't like. I, like I said, I don't say it offensively to people, but I do like saying cunt or like, what the cunt and stuff like that. Also, my Canadian friends are really into using it too, and a couple of Australians I've met are really fun to talk to when they use cunt, 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 cunt. I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is the second time it's been used this season. <laughs> like... Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll tell you who's on the other one. Um, but those are all my questions for you. So the last thing I need is just for you to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Well, you can find uh, Rip Bison at Iron Rip Bison on Twitter, on Instagram. Don't message me on Facebook. I don't want to be your friend there. <laughs> you can also follow everything that I do with Pro Wrestling Grind, at, uh, Grind Piro on uh, at Grind Piro on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, that is the same. On YouTube, it's the same. I got Grind Piro for everything that we have social media. I believe our Tumblr is also, we have a Tumblr, yeah. Uh, what's your call it? That's also uh, Grind Piro as well. Um, and then any of the other promotions that you uh, see me on. I know you mentioned Wrestling Open, uh, which call I hop up on there a couple of times. Uh, Limitless Wrestling, follow them. You can see some. You can see some more of my stuff. IWTV. I mean, you can search Rip Ice and you can search any of those promotions on there. Um, you can check out all my matches there. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. It's a lot of good places to be a part of, though. Like yeah, really right? good. So, hey, he gave you all of his handles. He told you where you can find him. He even told you about his wrestling promotion and where you can find him on IWTV for nine ninety nine a month. So you guys, uh, you know what that means. Like every great part of a wrestling match, we got to take this home. Because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Into the Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you out there not to go wrestling. And like I said at the beginning, you know, I am your Sherpa, but it's never about me. It's about finding someone who has been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. So it's never about me. It's about who's into ring. And who's into the ring? You see him right there. Iron. Rip. Bison himself, so you guys know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there, or you're legitimately just follow us on all of our social media platforms. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. You even follow us on Spotify. You're leaving us five star frost slash reviews that you can find on Apple Podcasts or even listening to us on Amazon Music because we're there too. Buying all of our merch on Pro Wrestling Tees, telling your friends about us, telling your family about us, telling your enemies about us because you know if they don't like us, whatever we think. It's, we just wasted their time. So doing all that stuff. Thank you guys for everything. We love you guys and leave those comments like we said. And then uh, you're either waiting for this episode to end or you're waiting for the outro. And then you're choosing another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up down mountain call wrestling. And what we need from you guys is just kind of show some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast. Go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep putting on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the 3 count podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. 
Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, in the meantime, love y'all.